explain the similarities What it is that makes you look like me Well, could it be you and me? We've had enough We agree that everybody wants to be loved We are free, free indeed Gotta tell someone So we can hear the words Well done, my son We gotta come together now We gotta change our ways I need you and you need me And together we can be Better friends and better than we used to be Some have sown seeds of hate But it's never too late to erase our mistakes Yeah, yeah It's time to show the world a sign and wave a hand. I'm no longer the man I used to be. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. I'm free, but what about the other ones? The wayward daughters and the prophets. Sons, yeah, who am I to decide what's wrong or right? I'm just a sinner who can say I've seen the light. Why pretend to defend and condemn them? Throwing stones is a reversible trend, yeah, yeah. We gotta come together now. We gotta work this out somehow. I need you and you need me, and together. Good afternoon and welcome to Day by Day with Rob and Jody. I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. And we're excited to welcome you here to HopeRadio247.com. And a beautiful day today. I'd like to welcome my beautiful wife into the studio. Hi, honey. Hi, baby. How are you? Hi, I'm wonderful. And you? I am blessed and highly favored. And highly, highly, highly favored. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Of the Lord. Uh Uh-huh. That's a good place to be. Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. Well, we like to say hello to those watching out Hi, on guys. Facebook here. And, of course, all of you watching on Hope Radio, or listening, I'm sorry, on HopeRadio247.com. Uh, we'd like to welcome you today. And uh, uh, we'd like to take a moment and say thank you to Hope Radio 247 and Hope Recovery Center, both those ministries, uh, mm-hmm. for giving us the opportunity to be on the air with you today and helping you to find hope in Jesus Christ day by day. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, 
As always, if you'd like to leave comments for us, you can do so at our Facebook page, uh, Day by Day with Rob and Jody. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can send us an email at Day by Day with Rob and Jody at gmail.com. And Rob is spelt with two B's and uh, Jody is spelt with a Y. So that's Day by Day with Rob and Jody at gmail.com. As always, let us know where you're listening from. And if you have any prayer requests, throw those on there. As we love to pray for folks and love to know where you're listening from. Mm -hmm. we, we had a gentleman listening last week uh, checked in with us from North Africa. So that's mm -hmm. always nice when we get uh, those kind of check-ins. That's cool. Yeah, that, that's also really cool. Of course, so, we've had Germany before. We've had Germany before. We've had England. We have all almost all the 50 states. Right, right. So uh, it's great to hear uh, the folks that are uh, checking in from all mm -hmm. over the world. And, uh, that's, so we have an international ministry. Watch yeah, out now. That's great. Yes, we do. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's great. We are, We know that uh, we're in de definitely over 90 countries throughout the world. Uh, Hope Radio 24-7, all the programming that we have here, uh, goes out to over 90 countries in the world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, helping to fulfill the, the commission of taking the gospel to all the world. So, anyhow, we should probably have an opening prayer. Yes, we should, yeah. since we are talking about a really good subject. Yeah, I agree. So. Uh-huh. Father God, we just come before you. We thank you, Lord, for the, the ministry of Hope Radio and Hope uh, Recovery Center, Lord. Uh, we thank you that uh, we have listeners and, and viewers today, Lord, that they were, have their, uh, their uh, hearts receptive and their ears open to the message. We pray that our message will be on target today. Uh, we pray that folks will understand as we talk about this message today uh, how much spiritual warfare and the, the devil, the adversary, all of that is truly a part of our lives and how we can minimize, limit, eliminate, get that out of there so that it's not causing interference in our lives. So, Lord, we just ask you to give us the words to speak and, and the concepts to convey to the folks. And uh, we thank you again for this ministry, Lord, for the opportunity to be here and be your mouthpiece. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we kind of alluded a little bit as to what the subject is. Um, we... Uh, we're talking about, as the title is, how to kick the devil out of your life. Or as I so wonderfully <laughs> like to say, how to kick the devil's butt in Jesus' name. There you go. I get animated whenever I start fighting the devil. Yes, you do. And I mean, I know that Jesus has ultimately whipped the devil. He did it on Calvary. But sometimes we have to go ahead and participate a little bit in the conversation. That's going on. A and that's what, that's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> okay. A little bit. I got my sword. There you I'm go. ready. Oh, shoot, we should have brought our real swords. We're, we're anyway. armed. We're, we're we, armed with the sword. We should have brought our real swords in today. Uh, that would have been fine for the people viewing on Facebook, but the people on HopeRadio247.com may not. Well, have. they would have heard him bang and clang. Yeah, yeah. Not in each other. We fight the devil with them. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, yes, we do have two real swords, about four foot, no, three and a half feet a pop, and uh, they're heavy. Mm -hmm. And it takes two hands for me when I hold my Bible and hold my Bible in one hand and a real sword in the other one and just say, devil, don't mess with me in Jesus' name. And, and we actually, when we got married, we actually used those swords in our ceremony. Yes, we did. I actually came down the aisle carrying my sword. My sword's about five foot long. It's a little yeah, bit bigger. It's bigger. Than, yeah, it's bigger. Yeah. Bigger than yours, but, uh, and quite a bit heavier, too. Mm -hmm. um, yours is almost dainty compared to mine. Mine's dainty. Yes. But, uh, anyway, it, it still does the job. Yes, it does. So, anyhow, and not that you need to have a real sword to fight the devil. That's just how we are. So. It's all symbolic. As long as you got the word of God, you've got the right sword. That's right. That's right. So it's all symbolic. But So we should probably um, start this out by identifying what what is spiritual warfare and mm -hmm. what, what is it really when the devil's attacking. I mean, the devil doesn't come out and physically start punching you. You know, he, he attacks us in, in many ways. But the Bible tells us that we are in a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. The devil seeks to devour us, the world seeks to engulf us, and the old sinful nature seeks to enslave us. Mm -hmm. So this is what spiritual warfare is all about. The devil constantly seeking to devour us every, every time he gets an opportunity. Right. Uh, you know, the world seeks to engulf us. If, if, if we allow the world 
we will be just consumed by it, consumed by the evil ways, consumed by uh, bad habits, consumed by bad influences, mm -hmm. if, if we just allow those to take over. Well, you gotta, you got to remember, the devil has a specific assignment mm -hmm. that he has given himself because he's Mr. Prideful. Right. That's why Lucifer was a anointed cherubim of God. Right. And then he got full of pride and said, I'm going to be God. And that was what ultimately got him and a third of the angels kicked out of heaven. Right, right. I mean, ultimately has no authority in heaven, has absolutely zero power in heaven. Although he does go to the throne of God occasionally and try to get people like he did with Job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Job ultimately won that battle with the Lord's help. And being very faithful to the Lord, Father, you know, Father God, God Almighty. And... And that's in the Old Testament, so you got to read the book of Job. That's a, that's a good one to read. But then you also got to realize that the, the devil, Satan, or Lucifer, depending on what name you want to call him. Mm -hmm. um, you may he, have a few he, other choice names for him, too. That's true. We won't get into but we'll those. But we'll be specific because he, <laughs> de the devil is a legalist. Yes. He will take the scripture and twist it right back at you. So you better know your scripture. And if you don't, you're going to get it twisted at you. And that's where confusion comes into play. Right. But the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And the Lord Jesus Christ has come that he may give us life and give it more abundantly. And that's John 10, 10. Mm -hmm. But it's real interesting whenever you start thinking, now how does spiritual warfare really play in my life? Mm -hmm. Well, it could be as simple as you're having an awesome day and you get on the freeway and it's all good. And all of a sudden, somebody cuts you off. Doesn't cause an accident, but gets you going, you! Mm -hmm. And you start wanting to cuss at this person. Okay? The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's he's stealing your good attitude. Right. That's, that's number one. He's stealing your really good attitude. He could have stolen your car right then and got into an accident, and had, then you have to deal with all the paperwork. Right. Now, or could got you, God forbid, road rage comes into effect. He could have really messed with you if that guy had a gun that just cut you off. So, I mean, you, there's different things you got to really kind of think about here. Mm -hmm. you know, is it worth getting upset and flipping the guy off, basically, as 90% of the people do on the freeway? Or would you just wave at him and go, hey, hi, hope you have a great day. <laughs> That's, I, I've learned how to wave. And, and, and you've only barely touched how spiritual warfare affects us. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's just an itty-bitty. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, any, anytime you have confusion, condemnation, manipulation, control, mm -hmm. those are all ways that uh, spiritual warfare happens. And it, you, and it happens through other people. Yeah. It can happen. Now, granted, you can get, and this is an, probably another subject for another program, but you can get demons can come inside a person, a human being, if that human being invites them. And they can be relatives. <laughs> yes, but uh, <laughs> you know, but it's it's kind of where you want to. You're bad. And I'm but not it, talking about the infamous mother-in-laws either. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I I used to work with a lady many many years ago, and I thought, my God, she's the devil. What am I doing here? Mm -hmm. I don't want to work here. You know, and ultimately, we became really good friends. But it was just like, I dealt with her for a year being like, really? I have to work with this lady? Right, right. I mean, she'd ask me, you believe that stuff? I mean, I'm at lunch break reading the Bible in the lunchroom. And I was like, yeah, I believe this stuff. Well, you're just a fool. I mean, she'd get on me. Right, right. And ultimately, then she got born again. Right. So, I mean, that's how it can be turned around. But Anybody it took a long time. Anybody out there ever been called a fool because of your beliefs? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let yeah. us know, guys. Ah, we got some. We got some likes on that one. I see them. Fire it <laughs> off. There you go. But yeah, it's just it's amazing whenever you start seeing um, different situations that happen in the spiritual world, or even in the natural world that that the spiritual world is affecting your natural world. 
So it's kind of like, you know, we need to definitely have on our armor. Right. So we need to go to the Bible and okay. see, well, what is our armor? Well, before we do that, I, hey, I just wanted to give a quick shout out. We've got uh, a couple of new listeners, Michelle and Maida are listening today. And uh, then we also have some good friends joining us. Uh, Mia is joining us from, I believe Mia and Gus are down in Florida right now traveling. Oh, very good. And uh, Vicky's joined us and uh, Pastor Chuck and Amy over in Orange County joining us. Welcome. Uh, Welcome, guys. Yeah. And I know there's people we can't see, so you got to let us know if you want a shout out. Yep. We love doing those. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, anyhow, you said let's go to the Bible and do what? Read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. All right. And we have this down as the uh, Amplified Classic Edition. So, this says, uh, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with the physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are, the world rulers of this present darkness against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger and having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Stand, therefore, hold your ground having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, and having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God, and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness, and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith, upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the Spirit wields, which is the word of God. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit, with all purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Mm -hmm. Wow, there's a whole bunch in that. There's a mouthful on that one. Mm -hmm. What well, the Amplified is the wordy version, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of depth in it. Yes, it is. It's definitely, it's either Hebrew in the Old Testament or Greek in the New Testament. And you get a lot of information in that Bible verse or mm -hmm. passage. Mm -hmm. Like, here we go. We're the consecrated people. That means we're the separated people. Mm -hmm. God has separated us. So once you get born again... You are separated, or you, and, and other word, and, and another way to put it is that you are a peculiar person. I like being a peculiar person. I like being a peculiar person. So that all, the Bible also says that. So <laughs> anyway, I, I gotta tell you, in all this, I like to break it down real easy. And if you're on Facebook, you guys get you guys get to see the hand motions here. Because why? This is how I put on my armor every day. You ready? Here we go. I'm ready. Okay. Go for it. You, you put on, first I anoint my head with oil. So I'm an anointed, appointed, called and chosen king and priest of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I can and will do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And then I go ahead and put on my armor. I have the, and I, it's out of, it's out of sequence for what the word is, but I'm taking it from the top down. And I go ahead and put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the gospel of readiness upon my feet, or the gospel of peace upon my feet. And then I have the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So I'm holding up my Bible, going the word of God, I'm left-handed, so there you go. You get the left-handed version. So I just go ahead and I start winging it like, okay, devil, don't mess with me today. You're not going to take me down today. I can and will do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. 
I am a world overcomer. I can, you know, I can, and I just start whipping off Bible verses as they come to me. And the reason I can do that is because I either memorized them or I've read them enough to know of them. Mm-hmm. So you might get the Jody version, but you, you know, you know. And when I get really in a fight, I will whip open the page and number and I'll read it right so the devil doesn't mess with me. So it's just, you know. And if you wonder, does this really happen? Yes, this really takes place. (laughs) It really does. In our house on a regular basis. In our, yep, in the back master bathroom, you betcha. Usually in the master bathroom. Yep. Sometimes it's other places. Yeah, it's true. But mostly I'm putting on my makeup and brushing my teeth and doing this all at the same time, so. I can't remember who did it. Um, was it? Was it? Oh shoot! I'm trying to remember this great general, the face name. Hint. Yeah, I. What did he do? No, he he wrote the book, the he, uh, Christ the Healer. Anyway, um, I believe it's him. He would go ahead in every, or maybe not. I could be wrong. But one of the, um, I heard this by one of the other generals of faith. Um, shoot, it's going to bug me now. Anyway, that's not on the script, can you tell? No, but it's just what he does, he goes ahead and he puts on his suit every day. He stands in front of the mirror every day whenever he was, and he's, he is now in heaven. But he would go ahead and say every day that he puts on his suit and the Lord would come, like he would, have the Lord having it to where he is manifesting in him Bosworth F.S. Bosworth there you go I believe that's who said it and if I'm wrong somebody let me know that he would have the uh, he would put his suit on and every day he would proclaim that this man of God was going to go ahead and do God's work and that this suit was going to take him places. And I'm just like, I see the same thing whenever I put the full armor of God on. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm already dressed by then, brushing my teeth, getting ready for the day. And I see myself going, yes, I am fully capable now of taking on the day for what the devil might bring to this day. Right. You know, and I'm, I'm praying Psalm 91, 10, 11, and 12, that we command the angels to come down and protect us. I'm praying, you know, that uh, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. You know, just amazing, you know, just whip out the scriptures. And again, open up the Bible. If you don't know it, whip it open. What do we do? Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. And if you don't know what his benefits are, whip open to Deut- Deuteronomy 28. And see how the Bible will lead you different places. And that's the kind of prayer I would pray. Mm-hmm. And it may not be every morning, but sometimes you feel what the Lord will lead you either into a really in-depth devil butt-kicking prayer or is it just something where you just want to say, thank you, Lord, for all you're doing. Or you, or you just want to say, Lord, I want to love on you. I just want to worship you. Thank you mm-hmm. for everything. And, not, and, and don't ask for a thing. And just say, hey, I just want to say hi. Yeah. God just wants a conversation. That he does. That he does. Okay. How about, and then there's the kind where you, the, where you got to get into the devil's face and go, huh, well, now we're going to get to talking here. How about 1 Peter 5, 8? 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion Seeking whom he may devour. That was New King James Version, by the Mm -hmm. way. Now, you see, you got to remember, he is is walking around like a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion. That would give me a real image every time I go to the zoo. Mm Mm-hmm. Doesn't it? (laughs) So, and it does say, you know, to be sober, be vigilant. That your adversary, the devil, I mean, the the Bible here is identifying who is the adversary. So straight up, it's not, you know, Aunt Mary, although, yeah, anyway, it's going to be somebody. I said it could be a relative. I'm just saying. 
<laughs> but, you know, it, it could be somebody that, you know, is like a, a co-worker that you're like, I can't work with this person. And you got to deal, you got to deal with them every day. Well, you're going to put your armor on every day. That's right. And you got to show them Jesus because you may be the only Jesus they, they get an opportunity to see. Because yeah. 10 bucks says they don't go to church. Right. And I would bet sometimes in church you don't learn what you're going to learn on this program today. Mm. And sometimes they are people that go to church, so you got to be careful. Yeah, that's true, too. Mm, you got to be careful. So uh, in Deuteronomy 28, 7, it says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Mm-hmm. The devil hasn't got a chance. Nope. And the Lord here is Jehovah. Mm-hmm. In, the, in the scripture, it says Deuteronomy 28, 7, it starts off, the Lord will cause your enemies. So that right there, you know, you, you got to realize God has different names for different things he's doing. Mm-hmm. And that's another program in itself. That's right. That's right. But the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven. I think that's one of the cool things about uh, relying on the Lord and, and, and trusting in the Lord is that he will let you see that defeat. Mm-hmm. Somebody, some, Something happens to you. Somebody makes you bad, look bad. Somebody does something horrible to you, and you will get to see the defeat of that. Right. Provided you're... Uh, walking oh, yeah, the right, right walking ways. Walking with the Lord yep. and you're looking for it. Yep. Yep. It can happen, but you may not be looking for it. Second Corinthians 10, 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Okay. Who knows what carnal means? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Okay, well, the Bible says that carnal is our flesh, or our fleshly nature. So you want to have to put it this way, for the weapons of our warfare are not flesh. So that means it's got to be spiritual. There's only two ways here we're doing this. Mm-hmm. But mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. I just like the way that sounds. Right. That is right there. Kicking the devil out of our life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that because it's, you know, we're, we're not dealing with weapons that um, are what we would normally think of. They're not, they're not, as it says, they're not carnal. They're not normal physical, uh, visible, tangible weapons, you know, they are weapons of God. Mm -hmm. They are weapons of God, and they're very powerful. Now, you got to remember, here in verse Ephesians 10, 16, it says to lift up, and this is the Amplified, and other versions are are easier, but... It says to lift up all, oh, excuse me, lift up over all, there we go, I'll get it, the covering shield, the saving faith upon, we, which quenches all the fiery missiles of the wicked one. Now, when you say fiery missiles, that gives you a real big picture, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I actually had a dream one time of our house being hit by missiles. And that was the Lord giving me a warning that we were going to be heading to some kind of spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, we're not, and I mean, it was, it was hundreds of missiles. It was not just like, Oh, one or two stray missiles. Oh, darn. Yeah. You know, the military messed up. Yeah. It's not that at all. That was a warning that we were in for a spiritual fight. Right. And it happened and we won but it was definitely, I remember that vividly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, like, I wrote the dream down, so I still have it. Right. And it was just enough to, you know, sometimes you got to think of, okay, am I getting a warning of something that is, you know, 
in a spiritual nature, like a dream or a vision? Or is it something like, gee, this fiery arrow feels like it's hitting me right in the back? Mm -hmm. Well, you shouldn't be retreating if something is hitting you in the back because all your armor is meant for going on the offense, not doing the defense. Mm -hmm. Because if you're retreating, you're running away, and you are going to get hit in the back by a fiery dart because you're supposed to have your shield up. Yeah, that's a great visual. Good visual analogy, though. Okay. Oh, here comes something real big. We got to talk about this before a break. And that's Matthew 18, 18 and 20. Okay. Matthew 18, 18 through 20 in the New King James Version. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And that right there is the most valuable weapon in your arsenal for married people. Or for a couple. Any, or any, Anybody, really, that well, can I'm come just together saying, with someone else. But but that's, yeah. I, I, the reason I'm saying for a married couple particularly is because the devil hates married Christian couples that pray. Mm-hmm. Because he wants to tear them apart. Mm -hmm. Like no, no, nobody's business. He wants to have you get divorced and no more prayer. Just stop it right there. Right. Because this one right here is so vitally important. That would, and again, it, it is for anybody. It's not just married couples. But that's my little story here. Right. Is that it is for two or three are gathered. There shall the Lord be in the midst of them. And you got to use the name of Jesus Christ. Right. That's why the name of Jesus Christ is so vitally important for a believer. You need to know how to use it with your authority. Mm -hmm. And then whatever we loose on earth is also loosed in heaven. And whatever we bind on earth is also bound in heaven. So, I mean, there's a lot of spiritual meaning in this one. So whenever you look at it, you're like going, wow, there's, I could just, you could sit and camp here all day and do a lesson for an hour on this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that whatever we loose on earth, whatever we say that we want to have happen, and we say, okay, Lord, in Jesus' name, we want this to happen, then yes, it will. All right. But for what we need it to do, it's just kind of like, you know, have it to where we're, uh, where we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Where we bind on earth is bound in heaven. So it's like taking a package. Do you want to open the package? Do you want to open it up and un and loose it? Or do you want to wrap it up and bind it up? Right. right. In that situation. So. Right. Probably one of the biggest principles of... of uh, winning in spiritual warfare right there, mm -hmm. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. Yes. And we are up against a break, so we're going to cut away to our commercial break here, and we'll be back with you in just a moment uh, right here on Day by Day with Rob and Jody on HopeRadio247.com. White House Financial. You're listening to Hope Radio 24-7, where hope changes everything. Hi, this is Danielle Rivers. I'm an intern here at Hope Radio, and you're listening to Hope Radio 247. Hey, this is Ramon with Epic Thoughts on Hope Radio 24-7. Did you miss your favorite show this week? Not a problem. Did you know you could download the app? Go to your Google Play Store or your Windows Store and download Hope Radio 24-7. On that app, you have all your favorite shows. So whether it's the Eddie Foy Show, the Hours of Hope Radio, God I Love Sports, or your favorite show, Epic Thoughts. And you can listen to every show all the time on the go on the Hope Radio 24-7 app. There's also bulletins to let you know what's going on over here at the radio station and at Hope Recovery Center. Opportunities for you to give and even prayer requests. If you need somebody to pray for you, we are there for you. So we just want to thank you for your opportunity for letting us bless you with our radio station. Download the app, Hope Radio 24-7. Thanks for listening, and you have a blessed day. Hey everyone, this is Sean Kelly from the Hours of Hope Radio Show, and I'm just here to tell you about something near and dear to my heart. 
and one of the main reasons why we have Hope Radio 247.com. Hope Recovery Center is a faith-based outpatient recovery center who helps people with any hurt, habit, or addiction. The services we provide here are free of charge and available to anyone. We found the vast majority of people, they don't need a professional psychiatrist. What they really need is someone to listen to them, someone to love them, and to be part of something, a family in particular. For more information, call 951-603-0031. Again, that number is 951-603-0031. Or visit our website at www.hoperecoverycenterinc.org. As I always say, Godspeed, my friends. And we're back with Day by Day with Rob and Jody here on Hope Radio 24-7. And uh, we're talking about spiritual warfare and how to kick the devil out of our life. And, uh, you know, definitely a very uh, serious topic. Uh, definitely a topic that uh, we can all probably, everybody that you ask could probably say they could do a little more mm-hmm. in that area of their life. And uh, so hopefully we give you some stuff here today that uh, helps you with that. Uh, right now we're coming up on one of my favorite scriptures when it comes to uh, spiritual warfare, and that's Isaiah fifty four seventeen uh, in the New King James Version. It says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Mm-hmm. I, I love knowing that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Physical, spiritual, financial, emotional, all, all of those are weapons, mm-hmm. and none of them can be, can be used against you. And, and the story that I love that goes with this scripture um, and, and many of you may have heard this. Uh, I've said it a couple times before, I know. Uh, one of my favorite stories is uh, Pastor John Hagee at a Cornerstone Church down in Texas um, was doing a church service one day, and a gentleman walked into his church service with a gun mm-hmm. and was uh, very close to his pulpit. Within six feet, they say. The, yeah, within six feet, and uh, proceeded to unload his weapon firing at Pastor Hagee. Mm-hmm. And uh, Pastor Hagee grabbed his Bible and basically declared that my my Bible says that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And waving it at him. Waving it at him. And and if you know Pastor Hagee, Pastor Hagee is a, is a large man. So I, I would think that anybody that close mm-hmm. making a halfway attempt should be able to hit him. With a handgun. With a handgun, yeah. Um when the police came in and did they did all their uh, not forensic, investigation. investigation, they traced every bullet, and they said every one of those bullets, if you tr- trace the trajectory of them, every one of those bullets should have hit him, mm-hmm. and not one of them did. That's right. He he was unharmed. Uh, I believe that was a declaration because of the declaration of this scripture, Isaiah fifty four seventeen. Mm-hmm. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And 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 uh, and this is a heritage of the servants of the Lord. Mm-hmm. As we serve the Lord and we're striving to walk with the Lord and do the right things and 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 so forth, we have we have a right to expect that the Lord is going to protect us, mm-hmm. and we have the right to declare this scripture. Yes, this, this can be from a physical handgun. This could be from. Uh, a car accident. This could be from a fist fight. This could be from somebody saying bad things about us. Mm-hmm. Any of those things, and that weapon formed against us will not prosper. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but it's not going to prosper. It's not going to. It's not going to have a lasting effect. Right. You know, uh, I, I love that. That's that's just that's, like I said. That's probably my favorite scripture, and my favorite story when it mm-hmm. comes to spiritual stuff. Mm-hmm. What, do, what do you got on that one? Anything? No, I just think it, I think it's great. The story was perfect, and the one thing I'm saying is that, uh, on here also is that every tongue which rises ag- against you in judgment, you shall condemn. That means the Lord shall condemn it. Mm-hmm. So the Lord's going to take on the fight for you. Not only is He going to protect you with no weapon 
formed against you shall prosper. That's a protection mm -hmm. scripture. Right. So that goes along with also Psalm 91, um, which if you haven't read Psalm 91, you need to read that one. Mm -hmm. We did put that one down, didn't we? Oh, no, we did no, not. we didn't. <laughs> Darn. We talked about it. We, we talked about it. Our notes. No, but yeah, you need to do Psalm 91. And with that, know that he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, it, you got to know your rights. In the Bible, so right. whatever you, that you right. dwell in the secret place of the Most High, mm -hmm. that He will protect you. That you need to have faith in God. In Mark eleven, it right. says to have faith in God. Right. So whenever you have faith in God, it's just it's an amazing thing to know. You know it, that you know it. You know that you know in your knower mm -hmm. that you have faith with God. And that you can say these scriptures when you need them. It's like bam, 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 bam. As long as you read the scriptures and you memorize them and get them into your spirit man, mm -hmm. when you need them in your physical man, we'll remember them and fire them off like a machine gun. Right. You have no right. idea. And, and also, if you can't remember the scripture, at least remember where it is in the Bible so that you can open up the Bible and go, oh, it's here. Boom. Psalm 91, I can read it. Right. 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 And, and going with that is James 4, 7. Yes. The very next scripture that we have. You, you, can, you, can, you can count on all of this because, if, as it says in James 4, 7, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. So this promise of no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue rising against you in judgment being condemned, this is based upon, yeah, faithfulness. It's based upon believing in God and, and the faith of God. But it's based on also submitting to God. That means walking in the ways of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Le you know, walking out the things that we learn in our Bible. Walking out the things that our, that our pastor preaches over the pulpit. By doing those things, you're submitting to God. And when you submit to God, you have a right to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He That's has right. to. He has no choice. He has to legally. Again, uh, God wrote the laws. And when I say that, you know, God can be a legalist too because he wrote the book. Mm -hmm. He wrote the laws. And not only are there ten commandments, there's also a couple in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, but we need to go ahead and realize that whenever you, whenever you, do, whenever you get into a bind, you got the devil who's very much a legalist saying, but you don't know your scripture, so I don't have to listen to you. Right. And that's whenever you can open it up. That's why I say, if you don't know the scripture, at least know where it is. Right. And right. the prayer, can, it doesn't have to happen in two seconds. You can take 10 minutes or longer if you're praying in tongues and praying in the spirit. You can take hours and pray this through until the burden leaves, until the heaviness leaves. That you may experience with the prayer. Or you may get a heaviness when you're saying the prayer. Mm -hmm. That's God when that happens. Because then he, he's got you covered. Right. That, that's the Holy Spirit putting a blanket around you. So whenever you get the whole thing, it is that you, here in James 4, you have to be submitted to God. You have to be born again, spirit-filled. And this is where the fun part is. Devil butt-kicking Christian because you resist the devil. And the he here is a little h and a little e mm -hmm. that he will flee you. He has to flee from you. Yeah. And he does it in Jesus' name. The devil can't stand Jesus' name. Right. His, his one-third of the angels can't stand Jesus' name. And the Bible says that. All names must bow to the name of Jesus. That's right. So cancer, lack, you know, sickness, disease, mm -hmm. the devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever name you want to give him, mm -hmm. he has to bow to the name of Jesus. That's and he right. He has to flee. No other way around it. Yep. And in John 10.10, you read this one, uh, alluded this to this one earlier, but John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full. 
till it overflows. Mm -hmm. And I love this scripture. Now, some of you may know it as the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So it's kind of, you know, then it goes into 11, where it is, you know, that I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. So you got Jesus Christ being the good shepherd, and we are his sheep. I mean, it's, you know, it's like this. He has a, the, one of the stories in the Bible is he is the shepherd, Jesus, mm -hmm. and then you've got a, a, a whole flock of sheep, the, nine, the whole 100 sheep, mm -hmm. and one of them's going to go run away and can't get lost. So Jesus says, okay, the 99, you're good. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. And he goes after the one. Right. So I take great comfort in if I ever stray off course and start sinning, he's going to come and get me in a loving shepherd way. Pick me up and put me on his shoulders and hold me and bring me back home to the flock. Is that before or after your husband hunts you down and says, what the heck are you doing? That's true. <laughs> it might be before. <laughs> I'm sure it will be before. I'm just saying. He'll get to you a whole lot quicker just than saying. I will. <laughs> so it's, it's real interesting when you start putting yourself into these Bible stories. Yeah, absolutely. So that was John 10, 10, and, and 11 mm -hmm. that uh, we talked about that. And in uh, Luke 10, 19... It says, Behold, I give you the authority, the key word there, authority, to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Kind of goes with that Isaiah 54, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. But I love this scripture because it's giving you the authority. Father God has given you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions. What are serpents and scorpions? They're, they're just tactics of the devil. Mm -hmm. They're tools and, of, and, and of the devil. And it says, and over all the power of the enemy. So again, the enemy, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, the adversary, whatever word you want to throw in there in the word of enemy, you have the authority to have all power over it. Mm -hmm. That's probably, probably one of the most important first steps in dealing with... Uh, with spiritual warfare and dealing with the adversary, dealing with the devil, is that you have to realize and you have to understand that you have the authority to have power over the enemy. Mm -hmm. God's given you that authority. And it's not only the, yes, you have authority, and that we could do another lesson on that for yeah. a series on that one. The authority, just of, the the believer, authority of the believer. We yeah. should do that. And then the other thing is here, we got to remember that it's just not, like a spiritual mental thing whenever you start thinking spiritual warfare woo! you know i mean i know there's stories here at, at hope recovery where it's not just a physical or excuse me a, a spiritual oh, yeah. mental thing it's a physical thing it's a mental thing it's an ability um thing so you got to remember um i'm gonna have to get sean here hey sean Yes. Hello. Hello. Can you tell the, um, all the folks here about what happened with that guy that got brought up by the devil on the wall and got thrown down and a little spiritual warfare that happened here? Oh, yeah. Actually, he was in the back. Yeah, he's in the back, the back he, room. Yeah, actually in the, in the alley back there and... They were smoking, and he was only been here just a couple of days. Might have even been his first day, but everyone was standing and talking to him and trying to get to know him. And something just crazy happened. I mean, to where he was picked up, you know, four feet off the ground, five feet off the ground, and just his, then just sort of slammed down to the ground, head first, blood everywhere, and it was crazy. I mean, thank thank goodness that we had a fireman here at that time to you know <laughs> save him and and bandage mm -hmm. his head and mm -hmm. everything but i mean he wasn't doing anything but just standing there and next thing you know he was flying in the air and landing on his head so so something 
unseen picked him up about four feet off the ground and slammed him to the ground. Absolutely. Hmm. So, okay, guys, what do you think? So it, it can happen, <clears throat> you know, spiritually, as that one was, but it's also a physical, physical event yeah. Yeah. that happened. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be even something – oops, sorry about that. I hit the microphone. It doesn't have to be something even – physically attacking your, your body right <clears throat> um on last week's show we talked a little bit about an incident that we had at a uh a camp out that we did mm -hmm. uh, where we had someone um basically somebody walked through a campsite of another individual and uh that individual was looking for something to get mad at was looking for something to get mad at and he he came over and 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 asked us to talked to the people that were attending a, uh, a function that we were doing in the campsite, a uh, ministry function. And um, so we spoke to the people that night and said, okay, hey, nobody crossed through this guy's site. He doesn't want anybody walking through there. And uh, the next morning, someone came and walked through his site again. So he immediately called the park rangers, park security out and everything, and began to just go on this tirade against us as a group, attacking us and, and – uh, uh, saying all kinds of horrible things about us and, and uh, saying basically accusations that were not true and uh, even went so far as to produce a, an object that uh, he stated had been put under the tire of his car mm -hmm. uh, as a revenge to our, by our group mm -hmm. for him having said something about us walking through a campsite. Right. And... Um, so, of course, we had to, to talk with him and, and, and get him calmed down and explain to the park rangers, you know, we understand an individual walked through. That individual actually came over and apologized. And, and he's half blind, so hello. Yeah. But he and, didn't say that. And uh, anyhow, I mean, the guy that walked through. Right, right. Anyhow, this, this individual just continued to be irate and, and, you know, continuing to tell the park, well, they, you know, they shouldn't even be allowed to meet here and they should be off doing this somewhere else and started trying to tell the park how they should do things, really. Mm hmm and uh, we, we, uh, we just had to step back and operate in a, a little bit of a world of love there. and uh, It almost came to fist of cuffs. Oh, the guy would have loved to have punched me, and I know that, but um, we, we didn't allow it to come to that. No. Um, and fortunately, I believe God was there helping us fight that battle. And um, uh, Yeah, myself it, it and 35 peaceful. other people that I was teaching healing to was praying that this whole situation would calm down and... We had our own little spiritual battle going on. And I'm like, people start speaking in tongues if you know how to do it. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't, start to start praying and pray the way you know how to pray. Absolutely. Pray hard, guys. Absolutely. So, so anyhow, um, everything worked out well. But it's a great example of spiritual warfare it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical attack against you, or or a spiritual. I mean, a financial attack or any other type, maybe directly mm -hmm. against you. But a situation that you're involved in, it, mm -hmm. it can be uh, a spiritual attack driving that. So, um, Or something where the devil's interrupting, like yeah. the Word of God, as we were doing. Mm -hmm. The presentation of the Word of God was coming out in a mighty way. I mean, the Lord was all over that meeting. Right. And right. then the devil tried to mess it up by having another person say, well, you can't do this. And, uh, nah, 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 nah. and then, you know, how it's getting all in Rob's face. And Rob's being very calm and very much... I could see what was happening. And how the, the park rangers were just, like, standing behind Rob now. This is this was funny. <laughs> you got two park rangers standing behind Rob and, you know, just off, to, off his shoulders. And if this guy would have hit somebody, it would have been Rob. And then, then it would have just come to blows. But it was... And I'm thankful it did not happen in that fashion, but it was an amazing thing to No, but hear. I would have prayed for his healing after I decked That's, him. You betcha. Yeah. But, you know, this is, this is somebody that, I mean. We, I, I may be a pastor, but the only difference between me and the next guy is I will pray for his healing after I beat him <laughs> up. But, yeah, there you, you got the real side of Rob Judkins on that one. But, you know, mm. it does say to turn the other cheek, and Rob was turning it, but this <laughs> oh, guy was, was this guy was just not letting up. Mm -hmm. And I was watching, and, and he's accusing our group of doing all sorts of stuff. And it's like, excuse us, we're not. We've been here like two days, and you think we're doing all this stuff, really? Yeah. It was just the devil working through 
a person who got mad, jealous, upset, whatever the case may be, and was taking it out on Rob, and then yeah. it's totally disrupting the service of the Word of God being you know, put forth. So yeah. it, it, things can happen just like that, and that's how fast that, that incident happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just a great example of spiritual warfare can come in many forms. And uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. when, sometimes when you think it shouldn't, right, it, it still can. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, anyhow, it says here uh, in Revelation twelve eleven, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. This is a good one. I like this verse because they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And whenever you start looking at that, it's that you, you have the blood of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and you have your word and your, your and your testimony. So in your testimony, if you're like, well, I can't tell anybody, I don't know the Bible, I can't preach, I'm not this, I'm not that, you've got something that is the most valuable piece of scripture is your testimony. I mean, just think about it. If, if the Bible would keep going and writing it down, the book of John says that we wouldn't have enough, you know, books to contain yeah. it. Yeah. So think about it. There, there, what we have here in the, in the Bible is just testimonies of what happened. Right. Different stories. You have a story. I have a story. Everybody listening and watching has a story. Mm -hmm. And that is their testimony. And some people say it this way, I had a mess and God gave me a message. Right. Or so I you're was the victim and God made me the victor. Or right. gave me a victory. Uh -huh. yeah. And Troy, when you start thinking about it, it's just an amazing thing where it's like, wow, I really do have a story to say. And this is how, again, you know, being from a victim in, in whatever situation it was, to being the victor. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I got stories. I know we're in that time, but it's just, you know, we got maybe do part two on this one. <laughs> but it's an amazing thing to think about. It's like, wow, my testimony really does give glory to the Lord. And that's what we want to do. Right. Absolutely. That ultimately is what we want to do. And, you know, that would be a great challenge to anybody that's listening. If you've never really thought about it, you know, have you ever shared your testimony with mm -hmm. somebody? Maybe that's something that you should take a few minutes and, and think about. And maybe you should maybe make some notes of some key points of your t your testimony, your conversion, your your life in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. so that you're able to share that with people. Mm -hmm. Because that will be the best uh, uh, witness mm -hmm. to people is your testimony. What has God done for you? Yep. You know, um, whether it be a spiritual battle that He's fought for you. Uh, if he, has he redeemed you from something? Did you have an addiction? Do, you know, were you in an abusive relationship? What What is it that God has helped you through? Mm -hmm. You know, and I would venture to say that everybody who calls himself a believer, everybody who says that they are a Christian, has something that God has helped them through. Yep. Because that's that's why they're a Christian. Now you might say, Oh well, I didn't have a horrible life. I wasn't addicted to anything. I didn't have this. Well, I praise didn't have God. That. Yeah, praise God for that. But you had something missing from your life that there was a void as as jody so eloquently says that there's there's a, a a void within everyone that's created that only god can fill mm -hmm. now we spend our lives trying to fill it with all kinds of other stuff that doesn't fit right some of it's too much some of it's too little some of it the sharp edges don't go well in the rounded edges and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff but um it's like a square peg going in a yeah. round hole yeah yeah. Like that that's God's void yeah. that He put in everybody because He is the only one that oh. can fill that void. So everybody has something that they've gotten through. Yeah, that gives them that testimony. So anyhow, we are coming short on time here, and and we had several more scriptures that we wanted to cover that I just don't know if we're going to get through them all here. But is there one more here that you want to try and hit, honey, before we run out of time? How about? Let's go for First John 4, 4. 1 John 4.4. 1 John 4.4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Who's in you? I hope it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. 
And with Jesus Christ in you, it doesn't matter who's in the world. Of course, the, in the world is the devil. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter who's in the world if you have Jesus Christ in you. That's right. You're going to get through anything. You're going to overcome anything that comes your way. Mm -hmm. and, if you do it his way. Uh, if you do it his way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, like you said, we may have to come back and do part two to this because we got some other good stuff to cover, but uh, we're going to run out of time here today. So we do want to remind you, though, that if you live in the Corona, California area, uh, we have a Bible study here at Hope Recovery Center each Thursday afternoon from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. And for more info on that, you can go to Hope Recovery uh, and check their website at hoperecoverycenterinc.org. And uh, that Bible study is taught by Jody, and uh, she has a, a fun time doing that every week. So we invite you to that out. As always, we invite you to check out our Facebook page at Day by Day with Rob and Jody and leave us some feedback. Or you can check our website at www.tcb4jc.org. That's tcb 4 jc.org or as we say taking care of business for jesus christ mm -hmm. if you like notes from any of our shows please email us at day by day with rob and jody at gmail.com again rob is spelled with two b's and jody with a y and if you'll indicate the topic of the show uh, we'll be happy to get the notes off to you and finally if you'd like to support this ministry financially please send your tax deductible donation to rob judkins ministries P.O. Box 1415, Corona, California, 92878. And we would like to leave you with a closing blessing as we do every week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Until next week, I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. And we invite you to join us next time as we continue to help you find hope in Jesus Christ on Day by Day with Rob and Jody.